If you are looking to save every single dollar possible when it comes to building your new gaming PC, or perhaps you just want to flip a gaming PC and you want to keep the cost down, then today's video may be of some interest to you where we've got a case that I picked up on the AliExpress sales for around 23 US dollars, which is just dirt cheap. That was delivered to my door. And of course it doesn't come with any fans at this price, but also at this price, I was shocked because the case wasn't too bad. And we're gonna get into the details of this little case right here, the caveats and actually some things that it does really well, but there's also a massive elephant in the room to address with this case in particular, and that is the availability of it. See, the one I've got here is the iGo A275P. However, when I went to search for this uh, case when I was doing this video just to get the updated pricing, I just noticed it wasn't for sale anywhere. And in fact, there's two of the exact same case manufacturers out there on AliExpress, just with different names. The first of which is the AOC CG391. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same AOC that makes those high refresh rate monitors, which are pretty good prices usually. But then we've also got the last contender in the race here, and that is the Yeah Magic, yeah. which is coming in a little bit more expensive than the AOC. So they're 26 US dollars and 30 USD respectively shipped to your door. You can also get it in a wide aesthetic, and that'll cost a little bit more than the black version. But what we're doing right here today is fitting out a build that I would be sort of the most comfortable in terms of parts putting into a cheap case like this. And that is we're using the Ryzen 7 7700 and we're also using the RTX 4070 Ti. I think above that, if you're gonna go with some crazy GPU that's over $1,000 or say a 9800 X3D or something crazier than the 7700, I do believe you owe it to yourself anyway to spend a little bit more on your case. But let's get into all the details of this budget banger right here and then some right after today's video sponsor. Do you need to get Windows activated and don't want to spend stupid amounts of money on a key? Well, if that's you, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered. For as little as $21 for Windows 11 Pro or $13 for Windows 10 Enterprise, you can get activated instantly. And also, don't forget to use the coupon code BFTYC for a big juicy discount. Links in description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and let's get into this little fish tank budget case right here because it is hands down the cheapest case that I've ever bought off the internet, especially delivered to my door. Now, I have picked up some cheaper cases on the used market, of course, and I've picked up some pretty cheap cases on retailers locally here that just have flash sales on complete no-name brand cases. But this one right here does actually hit a special point because as I was building in this case, I was pretty impressed. Not just the build quality was pretty good, Good, but it also includes your screws, zip ties, and on the front I.O. you get two Type-A USB Type 2s, as well as a Type 3, and one of those is again Type-A. So there's no Type-C on the front panel. That would be one critique of only two that I have for this little case right here today. But then there's also a hybrid four pole mic in and also audio out for headphones, as well as a reset and power button. Then going through the inside of the case, you can fit a graphics card here up to, in terms of length, 325 mil long. After that, I wouldn't recommend any longer because the front panel itself isn't detachable per se. I mean, you can unscrew it, but it's hard glued onto the actual brackets that mount at the front of the case. Now, in terms of a water cooler, you can mount up to a 240 mil at the front of the case, or I guess on the side, because it's a fish tank. And then at the rear, you can mount a 120 like I've done here for this particular build. We're using the thermal right cooler for today's testing on the CPU, by the way. And we'll get straight into those CPU temps for you guys here, where we tested with the side panel on versus off, which is the easiest way to tell if a case just has horrendous airflow and you should avoid it, especially if you're going with a medium or higher end PC. But in this particular instance, we're only about four degrees higher a little bit under in terms of average temperatures on the CPU. And keep in mind, we have mounted just four really cheap budget fans that I actually paid nothing for. They were thrown in with a deal because I like to keep the cost down on a lot of my builds, especially if it's this one in particular where I'm starting with a cheap case. I'm just using a secondhand power supply and I've just got these cheap 
uh, four fans that I got thrown in for free. And here's where the temperatures to be exact. We're looking at 67.6 in terms of an average temperature of the CPU after stress testing for 20 minutes in Cinebench R23 loop. But then when we move that side panel, we then had the cooling go down to 64.1 degrees. But then for the maximum temperatures, it was only a 0.9 degree difference here. So it's just a little bit of a hotter environment for the 120 mil cooler at the rear here. But here's where we get into some of the better news. And that is as we go down, the graphics card itself posted some impressive temperature numbers. So in this case, we're using an RTX 4070 Ti. And here's where the temperatures were coming in with some unbelievably good results. And we've actually seen results similar to this before when we tested out the Deepcool CH260 case. And this seems to be the meta or the best way going forward to keep the glass on the side of your case and keep your GPU temperatures as low as possible. And that is mounting fans directly underneath in close proximity to your graphics card, where in this particular instance, we had here the hotspot temperatures really coming in a very similar temperature. In fact, the average temperature was identical, but then the maximum hotspot temperature was 92.2. And this is in a 24C ambient environment, as you'll see in both the CPU and the GPU graphs. But then we're moving on to the average just GPU temps. And here's where they were pretty much right around the same numbers. In fact, the average temperature and the maximum temperature was slightly lower with the glass on. So in other words, that channeled airflow coming in and then out the top of the case is helping with the GPU in particular ever so slightly versus just having that side panel off, which in the case of the CPU helped expunge the temperatures there. But in the case of the GPU, it didn't really do anything. So this is actually a really good push-pull setup, a vertical push-pull setup for this little budget case right here. So for the results here, they were really impressive, but keep in mind, we did have to add our own fans. Uh, out of the box, this case comes with no fans included whatsoever. So that's to help keep the cost down. But in terms of cases like these, I'm definitely gonna keep buying them when I've got all these spare fans that I pick up off used deals, where people just literally, whenever I'm used parts hunting, people just like give away all these different fans and I always take them off people, especially if they're RGB, because I can add them, or if, if they've got LEDs, I can add them to a build like this and keep the cost down. Though if we move to the rear of this case right here, here's where I was actually pretty impressed with what's going on. And the rear chamber itself is kind of separated from the front. You can mount a standard ATX power supply at the back and you've got room for extra cables, especially if you're on a budget and you don't have a modular power supply like we're using here with a 750 watt. But keep in mind to get the extra cable room, you'll have to take out the hard drive tray. So you can mount a hard drive in this case right here, but unmounting it essentially gives you more room for cables and cable management at the back, which is what I've taken advantage of because we've just used a one terabyte M.2 for this particular build. But in terms of mounting everything, the screws, everything, alignments and stuff like that, nothing was out of place here. But also the top of the case, you get a dust filter, but then on the bottom, you are missing a dust filter, which is kind of a little bit sad for me personally, because I've got the push coming in the bottom and the pull coming out of the top. But here is where if you wanna get a little bit creative, you can just sort of change that dust filter to the bottom of the case here. And you can then have the dust filter working a little bit better because it's sucking the air in from the bottom in this particular instance. So my second sort of session here with critiquing this case would be I'd like to see a dust filter down the bottom. And in fact, even the front glass here being sort of glued on to this connector right here doesn't really bother me that much because we're just paying such a cheap price for this case and it doesn't really get in the way of anything if you are mounting a 240 mil uh, radiator at the side it can be a little bit of a pain but you probably should mount that radiator before you install your motherboard and power supply in this case a 120 mil is going to do great especially if you're just using some mid-range parts Those power buttons and reset buttons, they click really well too. So <laughs> it's time to conclude today's video. And that is, I'm actually blown away by the price that you can pick this little case up for delivered to your door. In fact, with no sales right now, it's 26 USD delivered to your door. But then during the sales, you can get cash back. And sometimes there's these flash discounts like I got, and you can get it even less for 23 bucks. Now, keep in mind, I was only able to get a white and a black version, one each during these sales. And so that's to keep people, I guess, from mass buying them because they're not making a whole lot of money on them at this price. 
but still you can pick these cases up for really cheap and if you are in the market to just keep costs down especially if you've already got some fans lying around and you're doing nothing with them then this right here is going to impress just keep in mind if you are putting in sort of parts like we've got in today's build here i would highly recommend installing four fans in this push pull configuration to keep that graphics card as cool as possible because gpu most important part in the build usually most expensive part and keeping that thing as cool as possible is actually a very wise decision in my opinion to do because it's going to mean that the gpu is going to have a longer life and you can possibly resell that card later as opposed to it, say, prematurely dying on you, and then you've got nothing to show for it. So the Cube MATX case off AliExpress, if you see this going around with a few different names, I'll put some links in the description below, and you're thinking, well, is it going to be total trash versus, hey, can it do the job for the money? The answer is, in my opinion, it is going to do the job for the money and then some, with those GPU temps actually being pretty impressive. So good job from iGo here, but in the case of iGo, they don't particularly make the case or they're not selling it on aliexpress anymore but there are two brands that have kind of come in and said hey we'll pick up the slack here so i'll put the links in the description for those though the last thing i want to talk about is in particular this build here i just managed to get this ready for a flip this is a build that i'm going to be putting up for sale and so just bringing down the cost in any way shape or form and keeping the quality and the temperatures and all that stuff still good is always a priority when it comes to my PC flips. In this particular instance, we've got a used power supply that we swapped out on a budget build that I picked up off a used parts hunt. That was really inexpensive. Those builds, I've already flipped them, made money on them, but I put in 400 watts because they were in the RTX 3060 builds. And then I put the 750 watt gold that I pulled out of this with this build right here because it just matches the 7700 and 4070 Ti so much better. And then of course the fans were free, the, the case itself's budget. The 7700 picked that up off AliExpress when the sales are on. And then the motherboard, I got that for a really cheap price when the, someone said they had some problems with it. I saw from the photos it had bent pins. Picked that up, fixed the pins up really cheap b650 motherboard ram got that off the used market for a great deal but this last bit right here the 4070 ti now this 4070 ti actually came out of a lot deal that i got last year with 4070 ti's and it was the odd one out it had a busted power connector really sort of semi busted and there was a ding in the back of the gpu and when I initially got it to work, it would work okay. But then after I did that video, it would actually work sporadically. It would sometimes work and then sometimes wouldn't. So I couldn't put this in a gaming PC because it's just unreliable. However, I thought to myself, well, when I get to Taiwan, I'll try and take this over and see if Gigabyte in Taiwan will fix it for me. And if I have to pay a little bit of extra money, so be it. But then the crazy thing was when I got to Taiwan, I went to their office, I handed them the graphics card, and they essentially said to me, um, yeah, we'll take it, we'll fix it for you. And I said, look, if I got to pay some money, because it's clearly got some damage on it, I'll easily pay that for you guys. It's not a problem. I just want this thing fixed. It's a really good graphics card to just let go to e-waste. And so they initially said, okay, but then I, because I'm in Taiwan only for a few days for a tech event, I left it in the hands of a friend of mine called Marco. He, he's a subscriber here for a long time. He's actually got his own YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description below for you guys. He said to me, look, I'll take care of this GPU after you leave Taiwan and I'll handle the RMA for you and the warranty process. And I was like, sure, that's okay. But then he called me like a week later after I got back to Australia and he said, uh, Gigabyte are not going to honor the warranty because the card has physical damage on it. And I said, oh, okay, well, they could have told me that up front for starters. But after that, he said, look, I'm getting into micro soldering lately. I'll have a crack at this for you. I think I can fix it. And I said, okay. He said, but he's, he's a bit of a deals man too. He said, look, we're going to do a deal. And I said, sure, I'm, ears are open. He said, if I fix this graphics card for you, can you send me a budget 4K camera? And I was thinking to myself, well, yeah, I've actually got a budget 4K camera that I don't do anything with. So I sent him this Panasonic G7 that I had lying around. I actually picked it up for a really good deal locally years and years ago. And I sent him that off because he fixed this up and posted it over to me. So the last 4070 Ti in that deal has come back to life thanks to Marco's micro soldering skills where he bought a new power supply connector and then he put that back on for us and i'm really appreciative of that thanks heaps to marco for bringing this back to life and ultimately now i've got a 
GPU that I can put in a gaming PC and make a good flip with. Anyhow, with all that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed the today's video on the cheapest case I could find on AliExpress. And it's actually even cheaper than the open frame cases, which were already cheap as well on AliExpress. So this one's coming in with a really inexpensive price tag, but don't let that fool you. It's actually a decent case. And in terms of GPUs, I also think I forgot to mention, you can mount a triple uh, slot in this, but keep in mind, you do want those fans, I believe, down the bottom mounted to bring in the cold air. So I would be kind of careful with your GPU and CPU choice in the grand scheme of things. But up until a mid-range build like this, this thing's good to go. So happy days if you're looking for a review on something like this. And hopefully this has helped some of you guys out. Also, if there are some real budget kind of cheaper products you want us to check out, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Love checking out stuff like this, especially when it ends up being a pleasant surprise. And this one is definitely a pleasant surprise for all you value hunters out there. And with that aside, hope you enjoy the story time a little bit too. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, then you know what to do. Hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you in another one. Peace out for now. Bye.